Essentially, what we've done at the CRFM Secretariat is we've interfaced with the organizers of trade winds to bring to the fore issues related to IUU fishing. IUU, of course, stands for illegal, unregulated, unreported fishing, which is considered a very serious thing in our countries. And I think that augurs well, not only for this year, but the future, as the coastal and island states, you know, they really do have a need to make sure that they can not only identify, but they, they, they can protect against um, illegal activities taking place within their maritime jurisdictions. The fishing community is a powerful community, one that is constantly on the water, one with the ocean, and they are observant. It is so important that our law enforcement personnel build inroads, build relationships with the fishing community to improve their maritime domain awareness. In other words, their awareness of the activities that are happening in their waters. I think our law enforcement personnel understand the power of leveraging this community, getting to better know them, so that way they can use their observations out at sea to have a better understanding of what other illegal activities may be occurring in the maritime domain. IU fishing should not be taken lightly. It should not be treated as though it's just simply a regulatory thing. They should recognize its links to organized crime, transnational organized crime, and they should take every opportunity when they have a chance to discuss with other agencies that deal with IU fishing to ensure that they maximize any available information that may be there for them to deal with it. This is the first time in 37 years of trade winds that we've had any discussions on IU fishing. I think what it does is it brings to the fore the issue. It allows us to share with member states enforcement people so that they can get a better feel for it. Essentially, it's a good step moving forward to deal with IU fishing and transnational organized crime in the fishing industry. From the RSS member states, we have the Commonwealth of Dominica, we have St. Lucia, we have St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and we have representation also from Grenada. On the mainland, um, then you, you, you have Barbados um, being part of um, the regional seven member grouping uh, represented here. You also have um, representation from Suriname and Guyana on the southern continent. Uh, we also have representation from Jamaica um, in the north as far as the CARICOM uh, nations are, are set up. We have to have discussions with a number of agencies, international as well as regional, in terms of the way forward. Our ministers have given us a clear directive, and, and so it's a matter of following up on that directive to ensure that we maximize the opportunities from things like the Copenhagen Declaration and the Blue Justice Initiative, as well as the work being done by CARICOM Impacts and the regional security system in the OECS. We have been working with um, the Caribbean Regional Fisheries Mechanism, CRFM, um, since 2017 in bringing a training program for the member states, um, Coast Guard, Maritime Law Enforcement um, units that will give them uh, some tools to work with in terms of not only a background uh, with fisheries management, but in terms of, 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 of looking at the enforcement component, actually getting preparing and getting cases of a fisheries nature um, to court for a resolution. We've run three iterations already. It is the Fisheries Prosecution and Interdiction Course. It, it deals specifically with fisheries, fisheries matters, fisheries enforcement, uh, from identifying violations at sea to actually information and, and evidence gathering to preparing case files for court. This partnership has shown us how we can shine a stronger light on the fisheries community and act in partnership with one another to preserve these key critical marine resources for generations to come.